everybody and welcome back to the journey coach this is dr tammy Mosier, and i was asked by some after the last couple of videos to actually make some templates available for you related to research and so i went in and put together a template database for you that will allow you to just kind of plug and play with this template so this starts with the template research databases. You can rename that to whatever you would like it to be. But what you'll see is that there are four inline databases embedded in this, I would call it a dashboard. The copy, your research projects. So this is where you would add the new specific research projects. Your research notes, an area for that. And I've gone ahead and set the properties that I have on mine, but you can certainly change these to meet your needs or add additional ones. The research action items, so this is where you would put actual things that need to be done, and then research materials. So I set this up where you can put in, for instance, if it's a peer-reviewed article, an online resource, abstract, news article, podcast, white paper, gray literature, and then some of the basics a multi-select on author name so you can start entering those and one other thing that I don't have here that I would go ahead and add so I'll add it now for you would be publisher so who publishes it and you might want to set this up as a select and that way it will hold on to publishers that you've seen in the past and you can just choose them after you've entered them the first time but this would give you kind of a quick overview now the one other thing you'll notice I put on the research materials was the primary focus so right now that set is text so you can write a line a sentence a paragraph about what this is I would look at it as a place to put an annotated bibliography so that you can actually kind of keep an overview or quick notes about what it is the other thing you could put there if you don't want to write your own synopsis which is what I would recommend is you could change that from primary focus synopsis to abstract and copy and paste an abstract in there that would work for peer-reviewed articles and most white papers but probably would not work for other types of information you might put in here now you may be asking well why do i have these databases now instead of just using my larger project database or my larger action item database or materials resources database and here's the one thing that notion hasn't fixed yet in terms of collaboration so i use a lot of inline uh, embedded databases and the one thing about that is when i do that and i've got a research team coming together or you could a work team or you're contracting out to other people and helping them and giving them access to their particular setup they can then tap into your entire database just by doing view they could switch it to a table, to a gallery, to something of that nature, and by just shifting it, they could get an overview of your entire database. So that is not necessarily something that you want to allow. Even if you're working on, for instance, your dissertation or a thesis for a master's degree, and you want to share it with your committee or at least your chair, you don't necessarily want them tapping into everything else you have in Notion. Now, for my particular notion, I have a very finite team of people I work with on research, but the other thing you could do if you don't want to deal with the databases is you could just set up a basically page for a research project and set up databases that are only in that page and aren't connected to anything else and that would be unique to that research project now the one thing is if you wanted to look at that information you would need to go to that page but you could set that up in a dashboard through a few other steps so i just wanted to throw out some other options you would have now one of the things that you'll get with this research database you'll also see a link for this template for research projects so you can look at it as a separate template you can download or it should come as part of this package but this is where if you click on here and I go this is my first research project and I've got that entered there it is so that starts to kind of put that together and give you what you need to start your research database and really think through how you want this to look and when I open this up now you have the opportunity in this right is that you can go in and fill in all this information it's ready for you 
Um, this is already set up as a gallery view and filtered and sorted the way I like to see it. You can certainly change that by just hitting filter. What you'll need to do is go in now and you'll want to go into the project and you'll want to actually select the project, right? So that this starts to pull all together. And then I set up the view I like here, which is basically by person assigned. So if you're doing this in a team, this allows you to have your team as members and their particular action items fall under their name so you can easily see who's responsible. But again, all you have to do if you wanna change this is change the view and you can set up your own filters and then your research materials. So here is this and you'll notice that it's not in the same kind of uh, overall view that I had on the other page. So you can move stuff around on here and all you have to do with that is pick it up and move it around in your table if you wanna see it in a different spot here. So you have a lot of flexibility with this. This is just kind of my overview and the starting template so that you can build out and work on your own. Now one of the things you'll see up here is that I've already got it tied to area and I've got that tied to my area template database so simply you would just need to make sure that you're connecting this to yours so how you would do that on any of these that are connected to another database is go in click on it then go to the relation go down to relation here and then you're going to select the database in your system that you want to connect it to so consider these placeholders that you just need to change. Everything with this arrow facing to the upper right means that it's connected to another database. And these are the connections that you'll need to get some of this to fill out. So just make sure that you're connecting them to the database you want them connected to, and then you'll be perfectly fine. And then you can name it what you want so that you're aware of, of what that relationship needs to be and how it needs to look. Uh, this is a progress bar. This is a roll up. This is already set for you. This is connected to the actions. So as you add action items to this project and start to complete those action items, then this progress bar will start giving you the percentage completed toward the project. So this is really helpful if you have already added in all of the actions that you need to take. Uh, all of the to-do items for this project or a good chunk of them. So if I know phase one of the project is really gonna take 15 steps, we need to finish the literature review. We need to fill out the IRB, which means we need to have our complete research plan done. And you know, as I set up these different action items for phase one, because until I get approval through the IRB, I'm not gonna be moving forward with this plan, but I have to have thought all this out to submit, you know, I can lay that all out with all of the action items required for that. And let's say there's 20 of those, and this then will switch to 0% complete. And as I start checking off those items, it'll start ticking toward that 100% complete mark, which would tell you if you know that you just have phase one items in here and you won't set up the next set of action items till you get an IRB approval, then you could say that phase one's complete when this says 100%. So what I might do is go up here and instead of first, I might say phase one. And then when it's 100%, it sits there, we get the IRB approval letter, and then I simply open this project back up, go phase two, <laughs> attach the IRB approval letter down here, right? And then add my next set of action items. And so then that would tell me this would be phase two. So phase two would be data collection for me. So phase one is getting the full project outlined and completely planned out and then an IRB approval if required for what I'm doing. Um, that might be if I don't need an IRB approval, but I'm waiting for grant funds, or I need approval through my college, but not through the IRB because it's not human subjects research. I mean, you've got some variance there, but that's what would end phase one for me. Basically, whatever approvals I need to go to phase two. Phase two would be whatever the data collection plan is. Phase three is we've got all our data. Now we're analyzing data and starting to write prepare for presentations, submit wherever I need to submit, if I need to submit to the granting agency. So that would be how I would outline phase one, two, and three of a research project. 
if you're working on a dissertation that would look slightly differently and we could talk about that and how you might line that up in terms of your overall phases but this gives you kind of an overview of what this would look like how you would want to work on it if you want to share this with people and there are already people in your system then you can select a person from that list you can also go up here to share and click on that arrow and you've got some options here right so here is this copy the link if you want to send the link out or allow people to access this as a template then you need to put the allow here right you can allow editing <clears throat> you can allow comments and then down here you have invite people so this is where I would add people to the project and I can invite them. If they're already in Notion, then you can type in how they've got that set up and you should be able to find them and add them that way. And you can hear, you know, full access. They can edit and share with others. They can edit, but they can't share. They can just comment, view and comment. And <clears throat> they can view, but they can't edit or share. So this really depends on how you're setting that up for people to interact with it. But this is how you would set it up for collaboration. And you, when you add people and invite them, you can do that by just their email address. So for instance, if I was a chair of your dissertation project, you can invite me to your Notion research dashboard using this and my email. And then I could open it up and do whatever you've allowed me permission to do. So in case you want to go ahead and take that next step and share this with somebody, this would be a way you could do this. I hope this is helpful and what you'll find in the information below is a link to where you can get this template and so follow that when you get to the page you'll see you can subscribe to a newsletter you can subscribe and come back to this channel or you can go to notion templates go to the notion templates and then you'll see the templates that I've posted up to this time you can um, just click on the link and I've given you some instructions there on the page on how to actually pull it into your notion so let me know there's also a form at the bottom of that that you can fill out and ask for specific types of videos or if you have questions you want me to try to address there's a lot of other resources on YouTube surrounding notion and notion has some great help videos too but if you want me to address it, I'm more than happy to do so. Just be sure that you ask me to by filling out that form and I'll start adding it either into the YouTube video or if you need a template and you want me to kind of look it over, I would be happy to do that as well. Have a great day, a great week, great weekend, whatever we're happy to come upon while you're watching this video. Make sure you subscribe to the channel if you want to see more like this as I continue to develop this out. I'm going to be doing an overview of after three months how my weekly planner is starting to come together and then I will probably be sharing a template of that rebuilding it in this area so that you can take advantage of that if you'd like it as well I'll talk to you later